Hi guys! In today's vlog, I will be discussing to you about how does the spread of infection occur. Most of us, we are actually wondering how did we get infected. But first, we need to understand how does the spread of infection occur through the chain of infection. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the fire. For a fire to spread, it must be in good condition. It must have the three elements known as the fire triangle, which is the fuel, oxygen, and heat. Elements are necessary for a fire to occur. Removing one or more elements will stop the fire from spreading. Same as the infection, in order to spread, condition must be perfect. Each link must be connected for infection to spread. The good news is that the chain can easily be break. Each link can be broken which prevent the disease and keep patients safe. Let's go through each link. First link is the pathogens or the infectious agent. These are the organisms that is having the ability to cause disease. There are different types of pathogen, commonly the virus, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and worms. So what can we do to break this chain? Seek prompt treatment if you are ill. Proper treatment is one of the best options to stop the pathogen from growing. They will be able to give you a correct medical advice which is more direct approach than doing a self-diagnosis, which can end up letting a condition or a disease a further damage to your body. Remember, every disease or illness differ from one another. A bacteria needs a specific antibiotic as virus needs a proper vaccine. Another way is to clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. The second link, which is the reservoir, in which agent normally lives, grows, and multiplies. Reservoir includes humans, animals, and environment. Reservoir may or may not be the source from which agent is transferred to a host. We can break this chain by doing frequent hand washing. Hand hygiene is one of the most important intervention to reduce the healthcare associated infection and by following the six steps technique it will enable you to wash every parts of your hand and the longer you wash the more germs will be killed just make sure to apply moisturizer after another way is by using appropriate disinfectant it is important to choose a correct cleaning solution as whether you use it to clean a surface or for yourself a sanitizer can reduce the number of germs and has a fast effect, whereas a disinfectant kills most of them but requires a contact time. A sanitizer can't be as strong as disinfectant, so it is not as effective in killing all kinds of germs. Disinfectant, on the other hand, are strong enough in which, if it's used improperly, can potentially cause irritants and worse, can cause bodily harm when in contact with skin, swallowed, or inhaled. Another way is proper handling of food. By cleaning your hands before handling your food, separate and keep in a sealed container, refrigerate promptly, and cook to a proper temperature. Another link is the portal of exit. This is how pathogens leave the reservoir or the hosts. Examples of those are coughing or sneezing, open wounds, body fluids, touching, and saliva. Break this chain by cough etiquette. Catch it, paint it, and kill it. Always cover your mouth with tissue when coughing and wash right after. Cough and sneeze into the fold of your arms, dropping germs within easily washable fabric of your clothes. Care of wound by cleaning and covering your wound, avoid contact and frequent hand hygiene, no sharing of utensils and the proper handling of foods, and proper waste disposal. Waste should be kept sealed. If pathogen cannot get out of the hose, 
disease cannot be spread. Let's go on with the fourth thing, which is the mode of transmission. This is where pathogens travel from one place to another, even in your own hands. The different types of transmission is via contact, which is the direct and indirect, droplet, and airborne. The way to break this chain is by using appropriate PPE and making sure to use and remove it in a proper sequence to avoid contaminating yourself. It is your first line of defense, but if it's used improperly, it can cause more harm than good. Another way is to keep a social distance, like for example the COVID-19. It travels via droplet and expelled from a regional host via sneezing, coughing, or simply by talking. Virus can survive for a limited time outside of the host and needs to get to the next host quickly. If potential host is standing within the range of travel by a virus containing droplet, then they have the high probability of catching the virus and becomes infected. Another way is by using a negative pressure room. These are commonly used to isolate patients with a contagious airborne disease. The air pressure inside the room is lower than the air pressure outside of the room. This means that when the door is open, potentially contaminated air or other dangerous particles from inside the room will not flow outside into a non-contaminated areas. This prevents cross-contamination from room to room. Observe isolation precautions according to the type of transmission, like the contact, droplet, and airborne, as this create a barrier between people and germs followed by the standard isolation precaution. By not giving pathogens a means to travel, we can stop the spread of infection. The fifth link is the portal of entry. It is the way that the pathogens enter the host. Like for example, the break in the skin or the open wound, contact, improper use of mass, splashes in the eyes. To break this one, we must do a septic technique during any procedures, frequent hand washing, using appropriate PPE, and care for the wound. Remember, the germs can get in the same way they get out. This is the same in the third link, which is the portal of exit. The sixth and the last links are the susceptible hosts. Hosts are usually the person who cannot defend against the pathogens, such as the young children, elderly, burn patients, immunocompromised patients, patients who have underlying medical conditions. But it can also be anyone, even you. So watching your health, boost your immune system, working out, getting enough sleep, providing adequate nutrition, is one way to fight and defend yourself from getting sick. Removing any elements from the fire triangle help firemen to stop the fire. The infection occurs when each link is present in this order. As you can see, precautions are almost same for each link. When it is applied properly and regularly, you can easily break the chain at any link. Both needs to be in good condition in order to spread. We can fight infection like firemen fights fire. Your daily activities give you many chances to break the chain and keeping everyone safe from illness.